It's another cable show about God. Your host is Dr. Craig Johnson, pastor of Bethel Christian Fellowship in Agoura Hills and professor in residence at Chalcedon Christian Academy. Today we're going to talk about mockery and the spirit of Ishmael. And I want to read the text that we have from Genesis 21, verses 8 through 10. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, that the, she had born to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son, Isaac. Today we're going to talk about mockery. Did you know the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, that our enemy, Satan, is an accuser. Literally, he is a lawyer who's accusing day and night the people of God. You know, the enemy accuses all of us. We do have an enemy. But I want to reveal something about his tactics. It's not just that he's an accuser, but he's the arch mocker of all times. Do you know what mockery is? We've given a a list of it. To mock is to scoff, to jeer, to revile, to rail, to sneer at, to insult, to injure, to humiliate. Did you know that mocking is one of the most painful experiences we can endure because mocking is a slight at the very image of God we're made in? Now, we're going to talk about a story, and I want to introduce you to Isaac, the son of promise, and Ishmael, the son of the flesh. We're going to look at Abraham's two boys, because Isaac represents promise. Whenever God gives you a promise, that promise will immediately be assaulted by Ishmael, the flesh. The enemy is always assaulting the promise of God. And in the case of our message this morning, I want you to realize that the enemy of your soul is a mocker as well as an accuser. What do we mean by that? He always mocks. Remember when you were little and maybe you, you wanted to dance or something, you're three, four years old, and you get up and start to dance, and, and you're just feeling your liberty as a little kid, and some adult mocks you. Oh, somebody's trying to dance. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, that's so stupid. What are you doing that for? That's mockery. Everyone here in this room has been a victim of the mocker. Satan doesn't just accuse. You know, false accusation shouldn't bother you. That's like somebody accusing me of looking like Brad Pitt right now. Well, that doesn't really hurt me. (laughs) But you know, mockery on top of an accusation will cut you to the heart and to the quick. And the enemy is portrayed all throughout Scripture as a mocker. In the book of Job, he, he mocks Job. Job is a godly man. You read the whole book. It's a terrible book about everything goes wrong to, with Job. And you may feel you're Job or Job ass. Everything can turn wrong real quick. But, you know, the devil mocks Job to God. And God even says to the devil, quit mocking him. He's a good man. But that didn't stop the devil. You see, mockery is, there's, a, there's, there's an unreasonable quality to mockery. It's not logical. It's not reasonable. But boy, is it effective. That little kid gets up and tries to sing. And, and they, they have one opportunity when they're little and they start showing their gift and their talent. And if you affirm them at that point, they're going to grow into something majestic. But if you sour them with mockery, oh, you're trying to sing. Oh, yeah, Lord. Look what she's trying to do, sing and dance. That's a mockery. That'll, that'll shut a kid down just like that. That'll ruin a spirit. Mocking is a terrible thing. But the enemy uses that as his chief tool. Now, you know, it's interesting with Adam and Eve, the Bible says that when they sinned, they hid from God. Did you know that, that we try to hide ourselves when we sin? And Adam and Eve, after they first sinned, they, they hid themselves. And God said, why are you hiding? And Adam said, because I was a naked and I was ashamed. And God said, who told you you were naked? I wonder who told them. The mocker. The mocker. Do you know, I'm telling you, when I was a little kid, do you know what? The whole summer before seventh grade, I I just absolutely developed an ulcer in my stomach because in seventh grade, we had to take showers. Now, I don't know what that means about you girls. I don't know what you guys do in school, but we had to take showers in seventh grade or you weren't allowed to go into school. I worried all summer vacation about the humiliation and embarrassment of taking showers. When everybody else is having fun, I'm worried. He says, Craig, why aren't you having fun this summer? Never mind. 
And there came the day. It's enough <laughs> to face the showers, but the abuse and the mocking. I mean, it's enough to be naked, but to have everybody point out absolutely every error to you. Do you see how lethal that is to the soul? Well, guess what? God is going to cast the mocker out of your life where he has been in his tone and his way and his manner assaulting you. You see, we're going to find out this morning, Isaac, the son of promise in Abraham's tent, that represents you, the promise, the identity God's given you, your value as a person. You are utterly a promise of God in flesh. He made you. He formed you. You are unique. You're unlike anyone else. You're Isaac. You're the promise. But Ishmael, representative of the flesh and the enemy, is always going to knock at the promise with mocking, mocking, mocking. Let's look at our text again. And let me bring you up to date where we are. Let me tell you a little bit about the story. In Genesis uh, chapter 21, Abraham has two sons. Now, he, 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 he and his wife, Sarah, are given a promise. And the promise is you're going to have a kid. Well, Abraham's 100 and Sarah's 99. And it hadn't happened yet. Has God ever given you a promise and you're waiting, 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 hello, hello. And God waits until it's absolutely impossible in your flesh or strength to do it, right? I mean, it's done. You're finished. Check, please. Get the hook. It's over. And God waits until Abraham's body dies and he can't even, he can't even function anymore sexually. Then he waits till, till Sarah's utterly barren. She's been barren her whole life and now she's definitely barren at 99. And then they conceive supernaturally, miraculously. And Isaac is born. His name Yitzhak means laughter. Do you know what? You are a source of delight to the Lord. You are Isaac. You're the son or daughter of promise. God brought you here on earth for a reason. Now, your parents may not have planned for you, but God planned for you. It doesn't matter how you were conceived. It's that you were conceived, and you are right on time, and you are a son of promise or a daughter of promise. But let me tell you, you have an enemy. Ishmael represented the son of the flesh. Ishmael, Ishmael represents the mocking spirit. Now, we, we read last week that Ishmael, uh, finally Isaac is born and his mother nurses him and he's about three years of age and she weans him. And Genesis 21, 8 says, the day Isaac was weaned and became independent of his mother, they made a feast for him. And he's at a place of his inheritance where there's great joy and delight, but it is at exactly the moment that you are closest to your promise being fulfilled that mocking starts. Ishmael begins to mock. Now, let me tell you in the story, Isaac is three, Ishmael is 17, okay? This is not natural. The Hebrew word mocking means uh, continually. This wasn't like he pointed to the three-year-old and said, you know, look at your, you got a stinky diaper. Take that. Ishmael was consistently mocking the son of promise, making fun of him through a root of bitterness and jealousy. And, and in his own anguish, he's assaulting this kid. He's verbally abusing this kid. He's mocking the child of promise. And guess what? Both Sarah and Abraham said, mm -mm. in one tent, God's promise and the mocker cannot stay. One's got to go. One's got to go. Either God's promise is going to stay in our tent, in our heart, and be nourished, and we're going to become all he's called us to be, or the mocker is going to stay, and God's promise is going to go. There's not room for Isaac and Ishmael under Abraham's one tent of promise. Let me tell you something. God has you. He didn't have one of you. He wanted one of you, so he made one of you. But the enemy will tell you, oh, he's got plenty of you. There's nothing unique about you. You don't measure up. You're just stupid. You're just ugly. If you just look different or you had different talents or different gifts, if you just weren't as old as you are right now, mock, here comes the mocker. Hey, Isaac's just three years old, man. He's just walking around with his first bottle, you know? And there's a feast, but you know all the attention that used to be on Ishmael because he was the first son. Where did he come from? Well, he came from a faux pas. Did you know... <laughs> Abraham and Sarah were given a hope they were going to have a child. And time went by and uh, Sarah got frantic. So she decided she's going to make that kid happen on her terms. So she says to Abraham, Abraham, there's Hagar here, our Egyptian servant. Why don't you have a child with her? And legally it's mine. And maybe that's how God's going to fulfill his will. Did you know God does not need our help to fulfill his promise? 
And when we try to help God fulfill his promise, we birth Ishmael's. And the problem with Ishmael is Ishmael looked like Abraham, but he didn't look like Sarah at all because he was Hagar's boy. He was a boy born of an Egyptian slave. You know where they picked up Hagar? In Egypt. When Abraham disobeyed God and went to Egypt, he picked something up there. You know, you pick a few things up sometimes. (laughs) When you go where you shouldn't go. Nobody says amen at that point. You just think to yourself now, but have you, you know, when you go wallowing around in the enemy's uh, mud, you tend to pick something up and you bring something back. Whenever you go to Egypt, you bring something back. Well, they went to Egypt against God's will and in comes Hagar, the Egyptian servant. And yet Abraham, in a weak moment, conceives a son, his name is Ishmael, in the flesh, in his own strength. And guess what? Ishmael gets his daddy's full attention for 17 years. About. And then the lies that comes around. Ooh, you know sibling rivalry is in a family. You get a new baby come in that puts everybody out of joint. The whole family constellation goes crazy when the new baby comes in. And when God does a new thing in your life and it comes in, everything about you starts going crazy, right? Well, Ishmael, who, he was always a troubled kid. He was always, the Bible said he was a wild, wild ass man, wild as a donkey, the Bible said. His hand was against everyone. Everybody's hand was against him. That's what the Bible calls him. Now, he was that the whole time, but did you know he was pretty calm And, you know, the enemy can be pretty calm until the promise comes in. See, when God gives you a promise, it stirs up darkness as well as light. When you get closer to the fulfillment of a promise in your life, the resistance and the mockery will come up as never before. And here's Ishmael mocking the child of promise. The enemy isn't just an accuser. He's a mocker. Let me read some texts about mockery. The disrespectful contempt Mark 10, 33 and 34, Jesus said, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles, and they shall mock him. Luke 22, 63 to 64, And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they blindfolded him, they struck him in the face and said, Prophesy, prophet, who is it that smote thee? Luke 23, 11, and Herod and his men of war set him and mocked him and arrayed him in gorgeous robes and sent him again to Pilate. Mockery. Luke 23, 35 to 37, and the people stood beholding and the rulers also with them derided him and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, offering him vinegar and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And listen to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 36. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. Do you see how mocking is the highest level of assault against you as an Isaac, a son or daughter of promise made in the image of God? When somebody mocks you, you know, they could reason with you. That doesn't get you down. But when somebody goes, oh, you're so special. Oh, aren't you just a big deal? (laughs) Can you see them circling the Lord of glory, the Son of God, who has never sinned, and they're mocking him. And he's naked, suspended between heaven and earth, dying for the sins of the world, and they're poking fun at him and mocking him as he is there accomplishing the redemption of the world. Satan knows he can't win the reasoning battle, so he cuts right to that which would maim us and cripple us more than anything else, mockery. Anyone ever mocked you? maybe a former spouse, maybe somebody close to you in your family. Think of when you were little and think of when you were vulnerable, like little Isaac, three years old, just weaned, running around, just finding out who you are, and you are the son and daughter of promise. If you're alive right now, you are an Isaac. But Isaacs are known by who mocks them. Now think about it. I don't want to just get you to go dig through the past because God knows we all have enough of it and God's trying to get us to look at the future. But think of how this thread of mocking has affected your life. It could have been a spouse that kept pointing out your imperfections all the time, but not just pointing them out, but grilling you and mocking you, making fun. Oh, oh, aren't you Mr. Handsome? Jeez. Put on another 10 pounds, guy. Jeez. Mocking. Facts are facts, but when you put the mock on it, then there's, there's an assault. And I know I'm talking to some people today. And, 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 and again, 
it's God's Holy Spirit that will bring a deliverance from the yoke of mocking. But the wounds that have been produced in you through the mocker, and by the way, if you get mocked enough, you might yield and become a mocker yourself. Do you see somebody that has been assassinated and assaulted by mockery? Someone who is an Isaac of promise, who's been assaulted by an Ishmael of mockery. If you yield to it in your sinful, broken nature, you begin to mock other people. That's when you begin to tell your children, you're stupid, you're dumb, you don't measure up. Who do you think you are? You're not going anywhere. Your daddy didn't go anywhere and you're not going anywhere. That's mocking. Did you see that? It, it, you don't hand it back. You pass it on. If you were continually, consistently mocked and you were debilitated by that and you don't get that cleansed and healed and you don't get empowerment and healing by the Holy Spirit at that point of mocking, you're open to become a mocker to other people. You know what it's like to be around mockers, man. They, they can roll their eyes. They can say more without a word. I know somebody that doesn't even need to say anything. All they need to do is go roll their eyes. Don't even need to say anything. You know those people. And they can always say, I didn't say anything. No, you just mocked me from heaven to hell and everything in between. One look, a parent, you know that look. They give you some look. You don't, you, they, they've just preached a sermon to you. Mocking can be conveyed with, the, the Bible called it shooting out the lip, curling the lip, jeering, because it involves railing and jeering and insulting. And <laughs> yeah. Do you know so-and-so is so anointed. Their ministry is so wonderful. Oh, uh, what? What? Oh, never mind. Well, what? I just mentioned that ministry really blessed me. Hmm. Just shoot out the lip. All you got to do at Denny's is just look away when, at the right moment, and you've mocked somebody. Come on. I'm not talking about having fun and kibitzing. I'm talking about a lethal word that goes in and assaults the soul. It could be somebody that rejected you in romance. It could be somebody that, that said you don't measure up. You're not enough. You, you, I, you, I wish you just looked different. I just wish that you were a different age. I just wish you did, didn't have whatever you've got. You know what? Mocking is devastating, railing, assaulting. And Jesus wants us to realize that the reason that we are being mocked is because we are an Isaac. We are a son of promise. We are a daughter of promise. And Ishmael, notice what they did. They said, he must be put out. The mocker has to be identified for who he is, put out. How do you put out a mocker? You see what he's doing. You see, what, you see the voice behind the voice. Have you ever dealt with someone that has demonic problems? There's eyes behind the eyes, a voice behind the voice. Boy, I'm telling you, human beings are made in the image of God, but they can be ridden like a horse by demonic powers, unseen, dark powers, and mockery comes through someone you know and trust the most, and it's right through their mouth, right through their eyes, right through their tone and body language. Mockery has to do with tone. Love you. There's the text, I love you. Well, you can say, I love you. Or you can say, I love you. Or you can say, I love you. See, see, tone and body language communicates a lot more than text. See, when you read the Bible, you don't hear the tone of God's love for you. You don't hear the mercy and the heart behind the text and the message. He loves you. But you also, in your lives, you're more acquainted with the mocker and his, what he's telling you and how he's speaking to you. And you think that's the voice of God sometimes. See, you get so used to hearing you're never going to measure up, you're too old, you, you missed your call, you missed the boat, uh, blah, 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 blah. Mocking it, it rails at your soul. And you are a son or daughter of Isaac. You are a promise on earth. Right now, you would not be alive if God did not have some grace to impart through you. But Ishmael will mock you to scorn. Now, so Ishmael is 17. He's targeted the three-year-old, and it says, the Hebrew says that he's consistently just mocking him. You know, you can really ruin a three-year-old real quick because they can't defend themselves emotionally. They can't defend themselves intellectually. And a good mocker, well-placed mocking, can absolutely take the soul of a child at that age and ruin them and wipe them out unless somebody steps up and protects them and says, get that mocker out. And they threw Ishmael out. It looks fairly harsh in the text, but it was wise to do. This boy was not just a victim of circumstance. He had picked up the bitterness of his mother. He had picked up that mocking spirit from Hagar. And guess what? Anything you pick up in Egypt involves mocking, and it's got to go back to Egypt. It does not fit in Abraham's tent. Abraham's tent wasn't big enough to carry Isaac, the son of promise, and Ishmael, the mocker. One of them had to go. 
And that's the way it is in our lives, isn't it? We can listen to the enemy so easy because we agree with his mockery. You're stupid. You know, and God forbid you have some kind of a cleft palate or you have actually a crippled leg or, you know, kids are merciless. They're merciless. Now, I don't know who mocked you and I don't know what was mocked about you, but we, you know, I'm just thinking of all kinds of kids when I was growing up in school. Kids that had imperfections. They had physical imperfections. We had one kid that had a stutter. And I'll never forget, I went and sang when I was a little boy at school. It was a big risk. It's something that I did. And I just, boy, it, was, it took everything I had just to pull through that and to get up in front of those people. And I did. And I walked out. And one of the most significant voices in my life at that time in school said, uh, you sing like an idiot. You sound like a weirdo. Now, everybody else was cheering. But this little boy, I'll never forget, he was sort of the bully of the school, the kid that you had to be nice with and be very funny for him not to beat you up. He just came up to me and with one well-placed word of mockery assaulted my promise, my Isaac. Ishmael, the flesh, attacked the promise in me. And I went home, and I know I shouldn't tell you this, but I went home and I went upstairs and I was absolutely hysterical. Absolutely hysterical. I was about 12. And I remember I locked myself in the bathroom and I got in the bathtub and I'm crying. My dad goes, what, Craig, what's the matter? Thank God he was there at the right time because I finally came out of the bathroom and I finally said, well, this kid, Tad, told me this. And my dad said, that kid's an idiot. He started mocking my mocker. Sometimes you got to do it. You got to do it. Mock him right back in Jesus' name. Amen. Carry that blood of Jesus around and say, drink a cup of this, you fallen nasty thing. Well, my dad was there. Boy, you know, sometimes when the pottery and the clay is wet and you make a wound in the clay, that's when you need to fix it right there before it dries. And my dad came right up and he took that little uh, snare of mocking out and he took that little bullet out and he just said, Craig, you are the best singer in the world's ever had or is ever going to see. That kid does not know what he's doing. He's jealous about you. He wishes he could sing as good as you. So my dad, thank God, was there to counter the mocking. I don't know if you had somebody there that was able to counter the mocking, but you know what? If that doesn't get countered now, it's got to get removed someday. So what I want to do today, I just want to lay down the foundation. I, next week, I want to continue with this and go where I want to go with it. But I want you to see that, Isaac, you are the promise. You bear the image of God. You bear the blessing of God. And the Lord wants you to know that you are chosen and you are alone are to fill the tent of promise. God has a destiny for you. When the enemy attacks your destiny, your value, your identity, he does it through mocking. That's Ishmael, the mocker. Isaac, the son of promise. The only answer and resolution in this story is that Ishmael is thrown out and banished. Now, what I want to do next week is I'll, I'll, I'll let this unfold and I've got more to add to this. I had too much. And I want to take my time with this. But what I want to do is I want to pray today over you that whatever damage has been done to you through the mocking of others in the past, in the present, whatever mocking voice. Did you know when you mocked when you're little, you got that internalized and you mock yourself the rest of your life? You know, when you, I hear people, I talk to people all the time and I usually hear them expressing some critical voice. You know, I don't know if it's mama that was critical or daddy that was critical or your uncle that was critical or your brother or your sister, but whatever mocking voice, identify the mocking in your life. Identify who the enemy was able to come through in a mocking manner to assault you because that's proof, first of all, that you're Isaac. It's proof that you are the son or daughter of promise if you have been assaulted in mockery. Mockery sounds like you don't measure up. Who do you think you are? You're not valuable. You're not unique. You're just one of the lemmings and seven and a half billion people on the planet. There's nothing special about you. Loved one, if you are alive right now, you're alive for a purpose. You survived. Look at what you survived to get here. Good Lord. Now, now some of us have been hearing about it your whole life. We, you know what? We've all been through stuff. We've all survived. But the fact is, you're here now. So whoever mocked you, don't lend your weight and credibility to that mocking voice and internalize it and become a mocker. You know, I was driving the other day, and I was actually in Westlake driving, and I made some driving mistake, and you would not believe what I called myself. <laughs> I'm sitting in the car by myself, 
And I just, after I heard how I talked to myself, I came up to the light, right? And I stopped and I remembered something Pastor Joel Osteen once said. He said, if you spoke to somebody else like you speak to yourself, you would be arrested on site. You would never dream of going up to a total stranger and saying, hi, you fill in the blank. But you know what? Sometimes we've been mocked and we picked up that voice. We've internalized it as our own critical voice, our own internal voice, and it sounds like us to us. But is it annihilating you? Is it Ishmael attacking Isaac? Here's, here's the interesting thing I want you just to, we'll, we'll develop this further next week. But the, the promise being present always incites Ishmael. Isaac being in the tent brought Ishmael out. Do you know mocking can be so subversive? It was so deeply planted in Abraham's house, it had to be surfaced and revealed before it could be cast out. Did you know that voice of mocking gets so ingrained in you that you think it's you when you look at you in the mirror? Or you do some stupid thing, you go, I'm such an idiot, I can't believe I'm such a stupid... It, you know, that's not normal to say. Try to say that to someone at 7-Eleven. See how normal that is. See how healthy and encouraging that is. No, Ishmael the mocker is always raised very close to Isaac, but there's a point when he manifests himself, he must be cast out. So I just want to pray for you right now. I want to pray particularly about this. Father, in Jesus' name, for all those under the sound of my voice, I right now arrest the spirit of mockery in the name of Jesus, and we unveil it for what it is. That spirit of Ishmael that has tried to insult and assault every promise in the lives of those listening to me. These are a people of Isaac. I'm talking to sons and daughters of Isaac. I'm talking to promised people, people whose identity is sacred. Their presence on the earth is sacred and holy and timely. And there is a voice somewhere that is assaulting Isaac and Isaac's promise. I rebuke that spirit of Ishmael in the name of Jesus. Father, we cast that out just as a name and a type. We cast out the mockery and the mocking that has come into our lives when we're ready to embrace our promise, our unique identity, our unique focus, our unique place in your world and in your plan. Whatever voice would say, no, you're not going to fulfill the destiny. We rebuke that mocking in the name of Jesus. Every voice that would say that we are something other than what your word says, we rebuke as that mocking spirit that must go out in the name of Jesus. Before we move any further in our mental and emotional and moral lives, we're going to have to address the mocker and cast him out in Jesus' name. Father, we ask for a special anointing that those sons and daughters of Isaac listening will rise up anointed with the Holy Spirit and will become empowered again and healed and renewed in all the areas where reviling and leering and railing and mocking have ruled the day. We thank you, Lord, that you have judged Satan through your cross and your shed blood, and the mocker himself is unveiled because of your great sacrifice, and we agree that he is cast out of our lives, out of the plan you have for us. And we ask you, Lord, to help us focus upon you, Abraham, the father of Isaac. We pray that we would cherish our position of promise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.